morning, everyone, and welcome to uh, Friday's version of Thursday's Tech Talk. <laughs> <laughs> and it was important that we moved it so that we could accommodate uh, Coco for being on the show because uh, I've looked at his app and I'm so flippin' excited. <laughs> so, um, again, welcome to you and Carlos. And I'm hoping that you will tell us what brought you to the conclusion that you needed to come up with something like Kippen, right? And, 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 and how you got Kippen out to us. Beautiful. Okay, I think that's fantastic. So yes, thanks for that introduction, Catherine. Uh, so yes, my name is Coco. Um, everybody calls me that, everybody that knows me. Um, um, I'm a co-founder of Kippen with Carlos, of course. And when we, when we looked at um, you know, how we got here, uh, it's an interesting story or journey, right? I always say. Um, we, the accounting space as we know it is, has been very uh, you know, physical, right? Very physical and direct where the accountant and their clients have always had to meet, uh, be face-to-face -face or have you know, data in front of them, right? So shoe boxes or receipts, you go to an accountant office and you see piles of documents, right? Um, so, you know, going, being a, you know, a consultant, uh, you know, by my, ourselves, right, uh, we noticed that that journey to the accountants, you know, every month or every, you know, year to see the accountant was becoming tedious, right? And we thought there had to be a better way, right? Because time spent is, you know, time you never get back, right? Uh, and especially when you have to drive sometimes 30 minutes or an hour to get to where you need to get to, right? So one of the things we thought about was how could we make lives of consultants easier, right? And small businesses too, right? How could we make it easier? How could we move the accounting, the tedious accounting work onto, onto a cloud-based solution, allowing for two-way interaction, right? Between accountant or bookkeeper and client, right? Um, and, and we also realized in, in that journey that when we got to the accountant, we spent a lot of time with the bookkeeper, right? First to make sure that the books were all in, in order, right? So again, the issue was how can we make a bookkeeper's life easy so that when the accountant comes in, the value out of an accountant is to help steer the business in the right direction, right? Provide that value at, at its service, right? So in order for the accountant to do that, he needed the books. And in order for the bookkeeper to get the information, she needed the files. So we, when you look at those three things, it was bringing it all together, right? So Carlos and I said, you know what, maybe we can take this accounting solution to the cloud, right? And then we can allow accountants to have portal access. So in, in a way they, they are able to maintain their brand because today, in today's world, if you look at it, right? You would go and buy a software, right? And that software would be, you know, whatever, QuickBooks, whatever software, Wave Accounting, whatever that may be, right? And you would use that software. And not to say they're not, they've not moved to cloud, they have, most of them have started moving to cloud, right? the, the base is shifting, um, but you are using their software for no reason, right? Just for the fact that you need a software to, to, to do accounting, right? So what we thought about was, well, every accountant has a business and every accountant has taken the time to build that business and build their client base. And they are trusted partners with their clients, right? Uh, so why don't we allow accountants to maintain their brand, right? So you have a brand and your accounting firm is called, let's say, Tech Talk Accounting, as an example, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and you already have a website, right? And on that website, you advertise, you know, other services that you may provide, right? Uh, uh, you might be providing uh, brokerage services, whatever that may be, right? But nobody goes to your site because why do I need to go to your site? You're my accountant. I'm going to drive to your office. And I'm going to give you a shoebox of receipts. But if we gave you the ability to have a portal, on your site, maintaining your brand, and your clients to click on that portal, access their financial records, have a look at it themselves, watch you as you go through the process, you know, sort of work with you, right, collaboratively, right, then automatically you are not waiting to the end of the year to get their feeds. You're getting their feeds real time daily, right? They are able to complete your books on time. That's one, so value added service, right? You are able to see real time how well your business is doing because you got that data in front of you, right? Again, through a portal, right? So both accountants happy because I'm not being rushed at the end of the year. Clients happy because he can see the business and how well he's progressing, right? 
because uh, data is coming in immediately. And the accountant has now the ability to sell other services if they want to and maintain their brand, right? Right. So to the client, he's none the wiser, right? To him, I'm just going to my accountant, right? And my accountant has a service, a value-added service that he gives to me, right? So that's the value-added service that we started looking at from an accountancy perspective. But then the bookkeeper came and said, okay, that's fine. You know what? I do the work, right? I've got to go in and I've got to do all this bookkeeping exercise. How do I make it easy, right? So we said, okay, let's look at it, you know, holistically or logically. Most of our spend as, as consultants or businesses is normally repetitive. We go to the same place, we consume the same products, we buy our business, you know, supplies from the same, you know, staples or whatever it may be. So you already getting feedback from the bank that says staples spend, you know, stationary equipment, X, you know, XYZ, right? Amount Z, right? So that statement transactional data doesn't change, right? So if we can create a system that can automate that process to say, I know that if I see this information, it's staples and it should be classified here, right? Then it can do it for you, right? So now 90% of, you, know, you do it the first time, right? So you do the first time to teach the system, it's almost like teaching a, a computer, do the first time, the system understands, I get it. I know where you want it. You told me to put, anytime I see this, put it here. So the system now takes away 90% of that workload from you and classifies it for you. So now it's only the 10% that the bookkeeper needs to worry about, right? Which allows the accountant now to come in quicker and provide that value-added service in terms of guiding your company and guiding your business down the right path. So that's how Carlos and I started thinking about it and said, you know what, there's, a, there's an opportunity here. There's a service offering that we can provide and, and we should go down this angle to, to investigate it. And that's how Kippen was born. And Carlos, if you wanna add, you know, feel free, yeah. Yeah, so, so okay, if I'm re understanding correctly, you basically said the difference because there's lots of platforms out there already. You mentioned quite a few of them already. So the real main difference is that you guys are a bookkeeper or, or tax accountant um, centered as opposed to Kippen centered, right? And then you've got that intelligent software or AI software right. that's going to recognize my my stuff when it comes in from the bank. Right. Does it also recognize the ones that come in from um, um, receipts? You know, like so, when I get my gas. Yeah. So, so if you went, typical example, let's say you went and got a gas uh, ticket, right? Um, we need to upload that receipt, right? So today, I mean, there's a, there are applications out there, hub docs, right? Uh, that they will do receipts and upload for you. And I think they've teamed with, you know, like a QuickBooks, an example, right? Um, but they come at an exorbitant price tag, right? Mm -hmm. um, so what we oh, did, okay. yeah. <laughs> so what we did was we said, we integrated that, we call it snap and go within our system, right? So on our mobile app, you take a picture of that receipt, right? Mm -hmm. And then you upload it. What it will do is it will go into the system and the system will wait if the transaction hasn't come in. So it depends on the timing. We'll wait and be checking for that transaction to come in from the bank. So we, we partnered with uh, Yodli, which is a you know, inter financial institution bank that pulls all bank statements from you know, Globe. So we have you know, connection with all the banks, right? So once the transaction comes in, it will find that transaction and it would link it, right? So that from an audit perspective, you have that trail. You say this receipt, you have an image of it, and you know the transaction. Now, if there are multiple transactions, you know, that come in within, within that same month that have the same amount, right? The system will, will flag it and say, I don't know which one of these transactions you want me Fair to enough. go against. So it's going to alert the accountant, you know, or the bookkeeper to make that decision. Yeah. That's amazing. Because you, you've got a, a obviously a bookkeeping background, right? For both of you, is that or that's correct? We have we we have an understanding of both bookkeeping and accounting, right? Um, we are both consultants, right? But we do have a CPA that's on board, right? So we sit down with a CPA accountant, and we've got two of them, uh, and then we work work through the workflow process and make sure that you know from an accounting perspective, we are fully covered, right? The whole yeah. gap process. Because I, I don't know about anybody else. Because um, we talk, it's funny, we talked about this a bit yesterday on the, on the Women's Business Club, because we were telling everybody that you were coming. And uh, I do my input for the month and my bills, but I have 
a, a bookkeeper that does my reconciliation because I consider that a four letter word, right? <laughs> uh, <laughs> but if your smart technology is picking this stuff up, that's even less time for my bookkeeper, never mind the $350 an hour accountant, right? right. That's, that's the goal is to make the accountant's job real simple. Yeah, that checks out. And this is what you need to do, right? Like you said, your business direction and stuff like that. Right. Yes, Catherine. And that right there is the is the value. That's because what we did before we came up with Kipping, we talked about it, you know, not maybe not in our basement, but we had a conversation yeah. uh, and um, we said, okay, let's go out there and talk to a couple of accountants and bookkeepers and find out what hurts, what yeah. works, what do they like and what hurts. And, and this is what you just described now is one of the pain points that they, they highlighted. It was like, we're spending our time doing repetitive tasks. And if we can free up that time, then the bookkeeper and the accountant can, you know, have has more room to pursue new customers and more value added service. Mm -hmm. um, some of these things that they're doing are just table stakes. So let's bring in automation to do that and um, with intelligence, but then with the beauty that the platform, you don't lose your identity as a business your customers are coming to a portal it's branded with your logo we're just the engine that is helping you underneath it you know we're the ferrari engine but you design the car you call out the car the way you want right and and this resonates with bookkeepers and accountants and even, and even businesses as well yeah um the way we built the platform you can use it as an accountant or you can use it as a business owner and you can invite your accountant to come in so we've sort of made sure we took care of everybody in how we've approached this. Um, small businesses, you can run your own, your own um, the, the keeping uh, platform, you know, accounting, invoicing, all on your mobile. And if you want your accountant or your bookkeeper to come in, you just give them access. And when you want to pull away the access, you can. If you're an accountant, great, you can add your customers in. So we've really sort of walked through all the different uh, use cases and made yeah. sure we we, we um, accounted for them. That's amazing. That's amazing. Does anybody have any questions? Because I mean, we're all small businesses, right? I know uh, Christiane, we had a real, she's walking downtown Toronto. So she may not want to talk to us. Mm -hmm. uh, you guys are in Toronto too, right? We are we're in West of Toronto. So we're in Oakville area. Yes. Oh, we're okay. in Oakville. Oh, you're in suburbia. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I got to make a comment here because I know that uh, with, with us, it, when you hand off information to an accountant, if you switch accountants, sometimes it's, it's, a, it's a bit of a pain. Right. Um, because now you've got all these people who have access to your stuff. But but when you're in control, <laughs> you can grant access and remove access. Then you still maintain all your information. Yeah. yeah. And I, I, we did think about that, too. Right. So one of the beauties of our system is, let's say you do decide, you know, you've been working with this accountant. You're tired of that accountant and you want to switch. But that minute you want to switch, you click on a button. It will disconnect from the accountant and move your data to the new accountant. So your new accountant now has all your data. You don't have to go stop fishing. And he yeah. will just say, I see all your records and I can continue from there. That historic stuff. That's huge. Yeah, yeah that's right. Uh, Christian, there you are. You stopped for a second, did you? Yeah. How did you come up with the name of Kippen? <laughs> good one. That's a good so question. <laughs> we wanted to keep things simple, right? So um, it, was, it was a choice of, we thought, keep it simple, right? Uh, but then we, you know, the word K-E-E-P and Kippin, uh, they sounded very alike. So we went with Kippin It Simple, right? Rather than keep it simple, right? And that's how the tagline came up and we just went with it. And if you look at the website, the website is kippinitsimple.com, K-I-P-P-I-N, it's simple.com. So it's sort of a play, a word play with, with keeping it simple, keeping accounting invoicing simple. Sure, there were some beers in that basement when you were <laughs> <laughs> That's how the best ideas show up, right? Yeah. <laughs> so I have a question for you, though. I mean, you're, you're looking at a daunting task. I mean, here you are looking at creating an app and all the costs uh, associated with that and all, and all of the, the knowledge of how to make that app uh, out to the public, et cetera, you know, keeping it up to date. You know, was, what was it that made you say, we're going to go through the expense and, and the unknown and, and actually get this thing done. There's some developers here, uh, app developers here that are probably thinking, should we, you know, you know, tell us about that journey to make that decision. Okay. 
So one of the things I always say, and, and I think Carlos is with me on this, is don't quit your day, day job, right? That's the first thing. <laughs> don't quit your day job because you want to, you know, start a business because you're going to need that source of fund in order to drive your business, right? Um, and, and you don't want to sink in everything you have. You've got to make sure that whatever you're sinking in is something that you can live with, right? Um, so Carlos and I both uh, came together and, we, and decided, again, as we are consultants, right? So we go through this journey day to day, right? In terms of seeing our accountants, right? So we said, it's not just building a service for others. We've seen the pain point. We need it for ourselves also, right? As we go through this journey. Uh, so we, we decided that yeah, it's going to cost us money. We got it, right? But where you spend a lot of money is when you don't know the direction you're going and you don't spend the time investigating and building out that delivery model, right? Exactly. Uh, so, so we spent the time building out that delivery model and workflow process so that we understood the journey, right? Uh, and then once we did that, we then said, okay, we, now we need to get you know the great thinkers, right? The developers, the, the great minds, right? Because you know, you, you know, the best CEOs always tell you, surround yourself with people that are better than you, more intelligent than you, if you want to be successful, right? Um, so now, don't, don't, don't get me wrong. That doesn't mean that we didn't get people and made mistakes along the way. Of course we did, right? We, we got some uh, resources in and we realized they were not as, you know, smart as we thought they would be, right? Uh, but then we arrived at the smart ones, right? So we surrounded ourselves with smart people. Uh, and then we started, you know, the think tank started, and then they worked with us to develop the product. So we did invest yeah. uh, you know, some money in, but we thought it was wise, wise you know, investment. Uh, and if I can add to that, Coco, you know, in, uh, in the startup, you know, if you, in the startup world, they, they've really perfected the art of being lean in terms of how you build, you know, a company um, from a startup perspective. So, you, you, you figure out your idea, it's a hypothesis. It's like, I think customers need ABC. Then you go out there, even before you build anything and you talk to them, you get in front of those customers, you talk to them, those accountants, those small businesses, then they, they fine tune your idea and they tell you, well, actually this is not really a great idea. This is a problem. It's not a big problem for us, or this is a problem. And, but we found a way to, to get around it. Or you hear customers that tell you, this is a problem. And we want, we, we're willing to spend money to resolve it. And then you take that and then you go build a small version of that solution, an MVP. And then you go back to these customers and you talk to them and you say, hey, look at what we've built so far. You've not invested, you know, you've not remortgaged the house yet at that stage. Mm -hmm. And at that stage, if it resonates with them, then you've got the green light to say, this is something that we've spoken to people. We built a small version, which, you know, Adam, who's a developer, can, can help you, you know, mock up type thing and people go yes 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 then you can start saying okay now we need to build a team now we need to get developers and now we need to build those use cases and you start off with the core of what your idea is and you add features you know over time so so that's that's the principle um and as Coco has said don't quit the day job so because this this lean method of building it helps you to sort of take it step by step right um because if you really wanted to jump into the build deep end and you build everything even before you've you've talked or spoken to or gotten your first customer it might just fall flat right yeah yeah you seem to be very aware of what everybody's problem is even though it it wasn't what your specific problem was so that group just goes to show you that market. Can I ask research. a question? Yes, yeah. go ahead, Victoria. Uh, I have. I wasn't yesterday, so you probably guys. I'm sorry, maybe asking the same question that you guys already answered. So this accounting software. So you guys, is it like a platform? If I'm accounting, accounter, so I can register it over there, and then when the client will come in, it will automatically redirect to me. Or how are you guys working? Hey, so. So you register, uh, and there are two okay. options we have, right? Or I would even say we have a few options, right? So first option we have is we, we offer both a franchisee model, right? Or, uh, or an investment model, right? So our franchisee model, when you register, just says, you know, if you want to, to be a franchisee where you pay us an upfront amount and then, you know, we, we get royalties, right? Mm -hmm. On every user you have, that's great. Or you can just register for free and we start receiving investments. So when I say investment is 20% of every customer you add is your investment to the platform, right? So what happens, and it's, a, it's a lifetime investment opportunity. So the more customers you add every month, you're getting return on your investment. So you, it's, it's a growth model, right? That we've implemented, right? That's one. Um, but once you register, you add your users to the, 
to your platform. So let's say your user is Adam. I'm using Adam here because we're picking <laughs> up. <laughs> so let's say you add Adam and you add his business, you will send Adam a key. We call it a private key. And then once Adam will get an email, Adam will then go in and he will accept the key and he will register with his username. Once he registers, he'll become active on your dashboard. And that's it. Adam is done, right? Adam then just needs to connect his bank, right? Through our financial institution, right? Pick his bank, uh, uh, connect it. And if Adam feels like he doesn't want to do anything anymore, that's Adam's decision because his feeds are coming into you and you as the bookkeeper now can do it. And again, as I said, you do it once and the system learns from you, right? But if Adam wants to go back in and have a look at what you're doing or even partake in classification, he can, he has the ability, right? But the minute you've touched an item, he can't anymore because now you have overarching you know, uh, control. Once you've said, I class this, Adam is you know, technically not an accountant, so he can't override what you said, right? Yeah. It's a very simple so the, process. So the way the model works is you could be an accountant and you can add users, your, okay. you know, your customers, okay. or you can come in or people, small businesses can come in as independent users. So they, they're not registered as accountants. They just res, registered as a business and they want to use the accounting platform for themselves because they, maybe they are quite savvy or if they get stuck, they can invite the accountant to come in, clean up, complete their books. So it's the platform for accountants. You can use it as an accountant or as an independent business that says, I want to just invite my one accountant in or my one bookkeeper in. And as an accountant, the platform is free. Your users pay and you can add as many users as you want. It's unlimited. Are you guys doing integration with other, with other tools? Like, are you guys providing API that I can use for the future? If I want to integrate with you guys. If, if you do, you can <clears throat> if you reach out to us, <clears throat> we can have the conversation because it all depends on what you want, what, what information you want to pull from the back end system, right? So once we understand what you want to pull, we can work with you to definitely uh, provide, pr produce an API for you to pull information, right? Got it. And if I want to leave you, for example, I'm like in your business and stuff like this, and within like a year, I found another solution that will like will help me with my business. Can I leave you guys? At can any you point in time. You just and you use... can give me all my records. Yes, you have you as the accountant, the records are there, right? You just download it, right? Oh, okay, 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 yeah. okay. It's it's okay. it will be no different from how you would leave, you know, in any system, right? You download the okay. information, you just have to go through the process of uploading it into whatever new system you want, right? It's simple. Got it. Got it. Got it. Interesting. Thank you so much. Thank you. But Victoria, we don't want you to leave, though. Exactly. I know. I want to be with you guys. You guys are the best. If you guys are this team, it. so you should be very knowledgeable. Yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah. For okay. sure. I got a question. Okay. How can you run a successful, long, long running business when you charge one quarter of your competitors? Your main competitor. <laughs> I'm being honest, right? That's Good what, question. That's the only thing that I. I mean, I hate paying 40 bucks plus tax to QBO every month because mm -hmm. I don't think they're thinking of people my size businesses. Yeah. And I love seeing 995. Yes. But then I go, hmm, how, how do you stay? Like, how is that work that you're going to still be in business in a year and a half? It's a good question. Very, very good question. Good question. Um, um, and, and, you know, I always say, the numbers is what drives a business, right? When you, when you look at Amazon today, right? And their price points are cheaper than everybody, right? Or even the Walmarts you go to, right? They're cheaper than everybody. Why? It's a numbers game, right? Um, if the more numbers you get, the more profitable you will get, right? And you don't have to worry about trying to jack up the price to a, an exorbitant amount, right? So to stay in business is, is about reducing our cost at the end of the day, right? So the way we built our platform, that's one of the beauties of going to cloud, right? You can scale, right? As people come on, you don't have to, you don't have to build a Cadillac solution and try to run everybody on the Cadillac solution. You build enough to, you know, withhold everybody that you have. And as you add more people, you scale out, right? So your growth model, your expenses are kept low while you add people in. So that you don't have to, you don't run out of business in a sense, right? Yes, and, and that's, remember when I, I, I highlighted earlier, the lean startup model, 
that's yeah. what we are we're practicing here. We're lean in terms of how we go to market, our development approach. That's why we can cut down those costs. Um, and, you know, it's that fine balance between um, <clears throat> focusing on what you need to grow, to scale and grow, but doing it from a lean point of view. Um, we, whenever Coco and I look at our options, we go, what do we need to drive the business but what, which is excess. Um, so all the decisions we make, we have that at the back of our mind. Uh, and to be honest with you, um, at the stage where we are and how we've built this with the way technology is, it's a lot easier to, to become lean. Um, you can spin up a website you know, in minutes. You can run an email applications you know, all, all SaaS based. You can, you can get you know, server space from AWS at, at a reasonable cost. So those core, those core capabilities, those core functionalities that you require to run your business, uh, and typically these businesses are bloated, which is why you know, and you know, the cost top line is heavy. We were able to to trim that, um, yes. and that's why we're able to keep it, keep it at a very cost competitive point. And one of the decisions Coco and I made early was we wanted something that was reasonable and affordable. So we had that at the back of our mind. We, we whatever we did with decisions we made, we, it had to be decisions that kept that guiding principle to say, we want this to be something that is reasonable and affordable. Um, uh, something that's not gonna hurt the credit card every month. Uh, yeah. And we've, we've stuck with that principle. Yeah, because if it, it tries to pull off the credit card and, and it bounces, then it's a really big problem. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know. Christian, do you have a question? You I, were full of them yesterday. I know, yeah, I do. Thanks, this, this is really good. So I got a lot of answers. So, um, I, where my brain is right now, so you need to know, so I'm just a, a one person shop and I have amazing business, little things, whatever. It's not huge. So I'm kind of the manual kind of gal. Everything is on Excel. So my manual process is impeccable. I got it. I send my spreadsheet to my accountant at the end of the year. All he needs to do is plug in the numbers. I've done all the work. So having said that, then two things. One is from what I'm hearing, then I could use Kippen and just transfer my manual process into your app or right. into, into, into Kippen, number one. Uh, Thomas, if you're listening, <laughs> this was kind of a bit on your side of things. Where I'm concerned is safety, of, and, and Thomas is my, my IT guy, um, is, okay, now I've uploaded all my financials. I've got everything in that system. It scares me to death. That's the end of my story this morning. <laughs> so so very good point, right? Very good point. And, and I think that was the concern a lot of uh, institutions, even banks had, right? when the cloud was uh, first uh, thought of, right? When Amazon and Microsoft came up with Azure and AWS, and then they approached the banks and they said, we're going to move you from a, you know, a, a, a infrastructure as a, you know, or, or physical data center solution into a software as a service or, you know, solution or infrastructure as a service solution. And everybody was afraid. Everybody said, oh, hold on a minute. You know, now we, we lose that control, we lose, the security, how do we know what you're doing with our data and all that kind of stuff, right? Um, but over time, people have realized the cost savings, when you look at it, is just, it, it, it's, you just can't compare it, right? That was one. And then they looked at the security aspect of it too, right? And said, well, hold on a minute. We, there is security. The cloud, you can secure everything the same way. And there are contractual agreements, right? That, that you go through with the AWS and everybody else. Right, so our platform is on AWS, right? So we are on Amazon services, right? So we already have one level of security, not to say we don't have our own additional level of security. That, so that's one. We then also teamed up with our partner institutions. As an example, our, you know, Yodli, as I mentioned, is our partner with a bank, right? A billion dollar company. And they control all the security from a financial perspective so that, you know, they do some sort of um, um, two, two, um, call it two-factor authentication 
um, with the 128 bit encryption yep. to make sure that the data 256 yeah, actually. 256 thank you Tyler 256 to make sure that the data is secure that they're passing to us right and if one little token changes that data isn't going through right so so we've taken care of you know security from a bank we've taken care of security from you know the cloud and then we've added our own security in by you know masking data by adding encryption data, data to rest, you know, uh, protection. So we've done that also, no different from how the banks would have done it, right? To make sure that we provide that level of service because we know, understand, we're accountable, right? We're accountable because your data is with us, right? So we want to make sure when we don't want to lose you as a client, right? So once, because yes. we lose you as a client, we, we, our business model dies, right? So we, and to add to that, Coco, very quickly, we also yeah. do a security audit. So we get an independent third-party firm to do um, a security audit, so penetration testing. So we say, here's Skipping, go in, um, and so, you know, they're white, white, you know, white, white, white box testing and black box testing. What does that mean? Try from outside and see if you can break, break in and hack into Kipping. Okay. And then they give us an audit. And then, you know, we give you access. Let's say, you know, Christian left her username and password on the table and someone's logged into Kipping. What can you access from you know inside the infrastructure so we also do a test like that and then we get you know re a response and we, we make sure we cover up all those holes if any so we do that on a yearly basis um, and one of the key things we do is we try not to store information that we don't need um, you, today you see a lot of data that you know um, different companies require from you and we don't do that we minimize what we require just to run you know your accounting your invoicing um, um, solution we don't go beyond that so as coco keep refer keeps referring to yodly we don't store let's say your bank username and password and how to pull that you know banking transaction that's not stored with us we don't keep any of that that goes through yodly yodly is a it's actually a three billion dollar company now. They they are uh, they handle all that. This is their day job, twenty four seven, and they are secure. They've never been hacked. So we we sort of think about this, you know, best of breed for security, making sure that we have this third party, you know, partners that come in and independently audit us and give us a report at the end of the day, and um, and that's you know that's how, how we, we 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 sort of get ahead of it. And, and the truth of the matter is that. The bad guys are always looking for a new way around into the house. And the good guys are always, you know, taking that step to catch up and, and overtake them. And it's a continuous thing. We will not rest on our oars. We would continuously be updating whatever, you know, changes are happening in the security world in terms of hacking, in terms of um, how people, you know, you know, malicious uh, uh, characters. Well, Christian, it's almost like someone told on you about those passwords on paper, right? Eh? Oh, no kidding. I'm, I am so busted. Big brother is bigger than I thought. One, 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 I, I, you, you got me on that. Well, they laugh because I have one password. It's no longer on my keyboard. So if anybody's busted in my house, you're not going to find it. Just saying. Um, one, more, one more question um, is, who is your biggest competitor? And what do you do better than that competitor? Wow. Okay, so uh, our biggest, well, the, the biggest, I'm not going to say our biggest, right? The biggest competitor is QuickBooks. I think everybody knows that. They're the largest, they're the biggest, right? Um, and there are other competitors out there like Wave Accounting, Zero Accounting, right? Um, but what do we do better, right? I think that's key, right? What, what, how do we stand out, right? And, and I think there, there are multiple ways in which we stand out. And I'll start with them. The first one is we provide that two-way visibility, right, between accountant and user, right? Where you're seeing what your accountant is doing in real time and he's seeing what you're, do what you're doing, right? And there's an audit trail, that's one, right? So that two-way communication is key. Um, two, as I mentioned, we provide both a franchisee and an investment model, right? Which QuickBooks will never give to you, right? You buy their software and that's it, you use it, right? But here, as we grow, you grow, right? So that's our motto is you grow with us, right? So as our company attains a certain height, your investment model is also growing because you're getting 20% of that user community, right? So it's, it's in, your in, in your best interest to keep adding users to your you know, list as an accountant, that's two. Um, three, uh, we also provide that machine learning capability, as I said, right? Where if you, you know, do it the first time, the system automatically learns from it, right? And executes it for you, right? So that's another one. Four, 
as I said, you have the ability to white label, right? So now you can maintain your branding, have a website and have a portal link that just takes everyone to our back engine. So nobody needs to know that we exist. They just know that they're coming to you and then they're redirected to the back engine, right? our back engine. So that's four, right? So those are four key parts that we know that we provide that others do not provide. Uh, five, we're simple, right? A simple system and we're very nimble, right? And that's where we talked about in terms of why QuickBooks charges 40 bucks because they've got this large base and we are a smaller base and we can control cost, right? So we can address your need quicker, right? Than, than the QuickBooks will. And you can reach out to us, you can't reach and QuickBooks will take you forever to talk to them. And they're not going to be dynamically changing their system because you want something. Whereas we listen to our customers, right? And because we're more nimble, right? We're part of, you're part of our family in a sense because you own a share within our system, right? Um, so, so those are five areas uh, that I can quickly roll off. And Carlos, I'll let you roll off for some if you have some additional ones. I do have some, but more, but I want Carlos to step in a little bit. Well, well, I, I think one one of the, 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 the big ones now in terms of how the industry is changing is um, QuickBooks has been a victim of its own success. So it's now QuickBooks is at a position where they're now eating into their own core customer base. So QuickBooks has released QuickBooks Live, which is QuickBooks providing accounting and bookkeeping services. So if you think about it, the accountants and bookkeepers grew QuickBooks the way it is today. And now QuickBooks is saying, we are going to offer the services because we need to, you know, we have year over year top line growth. Nice. Um, so as an accountant, QuickBooks now is my competitor and QuickBooks is the platform that I'm using for my customers. And that's not a good thing, um, but they have nowhere to go. There's no one else to acquire and there's no one else there, you know, there's no new market share. So they have to say, we have to offer additional services and we're gonna offer accounting and bookkeeping services to our own customers uh, in competition to our own um, um, account, accountants and bookkeepers. So that's not something we would ever do. Uh, and I think that that's something that resonates with a lot of accountants because they're really not happy about it. Um, but mm -hmm. uh, they, they, now that, you know, as the word gets out there, that is an alternative where you keep your own brand and you are in charge of your customer base and we're not going to be trying to, you know, take off your customers by providing services that, that is your core business. I, I think that that's a huge advantage that will resonate and is resonating. Yeah, and, and to add to Carlos's point again on advantages we have, and one of the one, one accountant that we onboarded, you know, asked this question, right? Says today, you know, QuickBooks will say, okay, use hub docs, take a, a you know, scan your receipts or whatever, and it will import the data and it will import the taxes, right? But half the time, they said 80% of the time, it does it incorrectly, right? So right. the data is not right, the tax is incorrect, and then you end up having to go in the manually put in it. So one of the features that the accountant asked us was, can we, in a way, automate the taxes in the sense that I know that if I'm classing something to, let's say, service revenue, that it's a 13% tax, right? Can I not predefine the taxes 13% against that revenue item so that anytime something comes in, it knows it's 13%, it needs to withdraw from that item because already you know it's coming from the bank, it's got this item, it's in staples, it's 30%, I've predefined it, let it go. I've done it the first time. So we did that, right? So our system has that capability. So once you predefine the taxes against each of the classification item, you're done, right? It just knows to class it, pull out the taxes and build out your trial balance for you, right? So those are features that we've added that we know exist because of you know, the interaction with our customers, right? Uh, so, so those are you know, and another additional benefit that we know that we provide. Another one is a la carte, right? So, QuickBooks does a tiering solution where they say, first you log in, you want to do cash accounting or you want to do accrual accounting, right? And then you pick one. And then after that, they'll say, you know, how many people do you want or how many transactions in this tiered, you know, pricing model, right? And we give you an a la carte system. We don't ask you if you're doing cash or accrual, you get everything one time, right? And there isn't a tiering model, right? We, it's, it's one price, you're in and you got it to go. So, so that, those are the advantages that we provide. Sounds like a, the, the accounting system that I use, but like the least favorite part that I have to deal with removed. Cause I hate the way that they, that FreshBooks tiers are cut, um, people who sign up for them, um, which is based on how many clients you have, which is Correct. annoying. Yes. yes. And, and, and not to mention that we, and I, I, we skip this point a lot, but we do integrated invoicing, 
So if you send out an invoice and you have our accounting platform to a customer and the customer accepts it, part of the workflow takes that invoice and posts it in the accounts receivable or accounts payable. So the accountant is seeing your invoices as you're sending them out, right? Through our digital system. And your clients are able to e-pay because again, we're integrated with Stripe, right? That allows you to do e-pay so it can be deposited directly into the client, your, whoever you're paying the account, right? And that transactional data will be seen by your accountant. So we can complete your books end to end. Amazing. One more question. Do you accept more than a Canadian currency? Is yes. Multiple, yeah. Yes, yes. yes. Actually, our system is built for it's a global system and, and your tax, depending on your jurisdiction or location, you can change it. You yeah. can, okay. And you can do that by product as well, but I understood, right? You were saying by expenses that you can- Correct, it. correct, correct. Yes. Because yeah. I have a couple 5% and a couple 13 Yes, correct. Yeah. Yes, you can go yes. and, and define that. And then next time it just knows, okay, I'm always going to add 5% on these items. Excellent, wow. So I, I just wanted question. to make a comment. Thank yeah. you. Oh, I just wanted, guys, you guys came so well prepared. Thank you. Amazing. Oh, thank yeah. you. Thank you, Christine. Thank you for that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I because... have a question about uh, residual income, uh, you know, your, uh, your 20%. Uh, what impact does offering that to accountants, uh, ha has that actually made an impact in how it's adopted? So, so you think about it this way. So if you, uh, let's, say you let's say you went down the franchisee model, right? And I'll just use uh, arbitrary numbers here. So let's say you went down a franchisee model and I charged you $100 you know, a, a year for that franchisee model and you were getting 20% back on every you know, individual that was onboarded, right? And it's a, let's say it's a $10 per individual so you were getting back you know, uh, $2, let's say, whatever, right? Um, so now over time, if you added 100 users there, right? 100 times two is 200 bucks, right? You, you're getting, but you're getting that month over month, right? So in a year, that's, you know, you can do the maths, right? To calculate how much you've made, right? So now you can use that and offset your franchisee fee, right? Year over year. So now all of a sudden, guess what? You're getting free plat, free software, right? Mm -hmm. And you're making money in some cases, right? Depends on how much the franchisee more price you pick, right? Or you're offsetting that franchisee cost and, and, and you're good, right? So you don't have to pay for software year over year and be using it, right? Mm -hmm. So I mean, that's where it helps and that's where accountancy benefits, right? So, so has it actually impacted your, your bottom, the amount of people that come on board? Like, Well, some people have chosen that model. Some people have decided that they want to go with the investment model where they just get the, you know, the royal, the, the, the 20%, right? So it, it depends. Every accountant is different. It hasn't really, nobody has said, one is better than the other, right? Okay. Some will just pick what they what they prefer. Yeah, and and we've seen different uh, different type of conversations. Some accountants have said we want to pay you directly for our customer base. You know, with the twenty percent off, that's fine. We don't want our customers paying keeping directly because we want to maintain that relationship. So we've the many flavors of conversation, and it's it's a constant strategy to say what's the balance. The, mm -hmm. the this model resonated with some. Some accountants go, hmm, it doesn't really matter to me. Some go, I love it. I want to sign up immediately. Some just love the being, the ability to brand their own platform. You log on to their, their website, they click on it, they see their logo, they don't know it's keeping. Their customers say, oh, this is the accountant's accounting platform. We're just the engine powering it. Different things resonate and we're sort of really building that to, to as our value proposition. Mm. Oh, that is amazing. And Christiana is right. You guys had tons of information for us. Gallo, do you have a question? I don't know if you were trying to jump in there. How do you guys market your product? Carlos, you want to think that? Yes, absolutely. So we, um, we've we gone through multiple phases, lots of learning. Um, and and we, what we've done is we've designed our marketing model based on the different type of uh, um, profiles. So the accountants... Um, resonates with more face-to-face -face conversation and you know you know so we're looking at direct sales tactics um, customers you know consumers small medium businesses social media is is key and is powerful um, so we're talking about social media platforms social media engagement um, webinars etc but what we've seen that resonates most with the accountants is a, is a good mix of in-person feed on the street sales tactics mm -hmm. and just brand awareness tied to social media so it's a mixture of in-person mm -hmm. and social media 
uh, um, 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 marketing strategy. Now, where would we love to be? We'd love to be on, you know, print media and, you know, television and radio. You want to turn on, you know, X, you know, a radio on the car and you hear, you know, an advertisement mm -hmm. for Kipping or your 9 p.m. ITV news and Kipping adverts on there. That's that's obviously, you know, the the, the final stage. But for now, it's social media um, advertisements, um, uh, Google, Google search. Um, you know, Facebook, uh, YouTube, LinkedIn, um, and, and, and then feet on the streets. Uh, so now, uh, how long did, uh, did it take you to get to this point? Oh, MVP. So MVP, hmm. as, as Carlos mentioned earlier, uh, was 2019. We're 2019, we launched our MVP, uh, looked at, uh, you know, what the, the, the feedback was, right? We gathered feedback. Uh, and then at the end of, uh, you know, beginning of 2020 or end of 2019, we, we then launched, we went live, right? So early 2019 MVP and then late 2019, early 2020, we launched. Uh, as you can imagine, COVID, you know, hit, right? Right at, uh, at our launch time, right? Which uh, a little bit set us back, I would say, because we were, our business model had, you know, some targets and with COVID and all the restrictions and everything else. Um, you know, it did, you know, impact us a little bit, but not that much because we're cloud-based, right? Um, so we are, you know, hoping that that trajectory is going to change as the, you know, the doors open up now uh, and we can go into full swing, right? So that's what we're hoping. Yeah. Okay. Any more questions? All right. Well, everybody, please make sure. Oh, Teresa, did you have something to yeah, I was just going to ask, so how easy is it to transfer from one platform to, to yours? So simple. So, and I'll explain <laughs> to you why I say that, right? Okay. So let's assume, I mean, most systems will allow you to export to Excel, right? So once you export your data to Excel, uh, we have what we call data transformation. So almost like an ETL, right? Extract, transform, and load, right? So you'll just, you'll, you'll, you'll download our template. You have your template, you're going to do a transformation to our template. It's really taking your information and matching it to our classification sheets, right? And then once you've done that, you upload our, our sheet and that's it, you're in. Yeah. So it's based off an Excel sheet. Yes, an Excel sheet to put it in. Yes, and once it's in, it's in. Yeah. Okay, so because I know QuickBooks usually exports to the QPO or, um, yeah. or yeah, uh, so those ones you would have, then have to convert to an Excel. Correct. For us, you'd have to go to Excel because I believe at QuickBooks, QBO is QuickBooks, right? They are right, one yeah. and the same, right? So, so yeah. they wouldn't want to export to us because that would be a They had no interest. We reached out to them and they had no interest in, in, in <laughs> They had no interest in partnership. Like, they have no. no interest in anything that's meant for the client. Do they treat exactly. exactly. yeah. So, yeah. So we had to come up with a model that was going to be easy and that's why we did that uh, you know, template. Yeah. yeah. And one thing I want to add is we are we believe in the concept of crowdsourcing. Like you know, Coco used the word community, and and that's what we are. We we don't want to build something in isolation. Um, you know, uh, what we are huge on is our customers. You know, our accountants, our small businesses, and your feedback and your conversations and your you know. We want you to believe this is your platform. It's like look think you guys should be doing this we don't think this is great here we like this but we don't like that mm -hmm. that's how we build a platform that is for everybody um and if anyone thinks you know what i like what you guys are doing we want to you know spend some time helping you focus on this area or giving you some insights that we think you know this is a, a pain point you guys are missing all my you know small medium businesses are talking about this all my accountants are talking about this capability this is what we want to hear from you. We like that and we want to build it together. Um, we don't see this as, you know, this uh, independent, huge establishment that we're going to run off on our own. It's, it's, it's a collaborative uh, um, platform we want to build. Excellent. So everybody, please put all your contact information in the chat um, so that uh, Coco and Carlos has a, have access to that. All right. And, and if you guys, again, would uh, put your contact, one of your guys, contact our company. Uh, do you guys mind if I take um, a screenshot for uh, my class assignment? Yeah, please go ahead. Go ahead, go right ahead. Yeah. <laughs> so nice to see fresh minds. Yeah, well, and, and just a brilliant presentation, uh, Coco. I really appreciate you yeah. doing that. Uh, it's been uh, it's been awesome, uh, especially you know what I got really excited when we spoke, and uh, you know it kind of blew my mind a little bit. 
and I'm, I'm really glad that everybody else had the same kind of response. So a couple of things I want to go through before we uh, we close down, and that is just the announcements. Uh, Catherine, I don't know if you want to go through those real quick. Um, sure. So uh, remember, Monday morning is Coffee with Ivan at 9.30. Make sure you bring your guests. Uh, we're off week for um, Sherry. And then Tuesday morning is the city leaders at 10 o'clock. Mm -hmm. Double check on that. Wednesday morning will be week two of our marketing series. And Wednesday night at eight o'clock, it's Investment Club, 20, well, I guess it's Investment Club 2021 with Stephen Lee, which is always super interesting. And your tech talk will be back next Thursday morning at 9.30. Don't forget, we also have a uh, photographer's walk, June 20th. It just go on the website for any of the information whether you are signing up for the um, um, marketing or the um, photo walk. Um, oh, July 1st, right? And July 1st, we have our open house. Yes, July 1st and 2nd, actually. That's right. Just said yesterday, yeah, um, here at the office. Um, so we're getting that information. And if we don't get it all before you guys leave, we'll make sure you get a copy of uh, all the contact information. And yes, from this great city and Tech Talk, thank you so much. I am super excited that somebody actually remembered their small business people around and appreciate our business, right? Totally. Because QuickBooks does not make me feel like they even know who the heck I am. So <laughs> <laughs> thank yeah. you. No, and thank you very much for having us. Yeah, thank yeah, you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Bye, guys. Thank you very much. Bye. 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 Thank you, Catherine. That was really well organized. You did it really.